what I like to say, uh, feel free to ask any questions. You can talk about uh, the business as well, but also my personal uh, position, if I went out for revenge or I was angry or whatever, but feel free to ask questions because it's uh, important that I can uh, tell you a bit about how things really work. I tell you a bit about uh, my situation when I was when I worked for in the Cayman Islands, uh, say, uh, or started the job in the Cayman Islands. Uh, the, I had to replace the chief financial officer. And one of the first two things he told me, because I used to work in the internal the audit department of the Julius Baer Group for seven years, and one of the first of things he told me is, now you're not any more an auditor, you are now on the other side of the fence. Now, at that time, I didn't know what really it meant, but it turned out that I actually had to... Uh, put it this way, do deals which uh, even the internal audit department wouldn't have accepted it if they had known. Now, I used to be an expert, I mean, within the Julius Baer Group in the internal audit department, uh, having audited the company for seven years, I felt we do proper business. But I had to learn the hard way in the Caymans uh, that it was different very different. Now, what would you have done in the situation when uh, you had to make the decision uh, to sell or buy securities which you are not allowed to? Or uh, what would you have done to in, in, a, in a such situation? Would you have performed the position as a chief operating officer or would you have said, no, I'm not going to do it? at all no 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 way i mean i was fired uh, uh and i had no compensation at all on top of it uh, even i won the case at uh, federal court of switzerland i still have to pay uh, 400,000 swissies on uh on fees to to, to the court 400,000 swissies and i won the case they said that i caused the case but at the end of the day uh it's the bank who actually filed the complaint with the uh, prosecution office and not any well so I have to say uh to make this clear uh i filed the complaint against uh julius bear in respect of uh uh stalking and uh, that complaint was turned down on the lower court on the higher court and eventually I won that case on the federal court. And in order to uh, stop the, the, the investigation, the court, uh, the bank offered 700,000 Swiss. They we withdraw the complaint. And actually I withdraw the complaint, but uh, the fact was that my daughter and myself uh, filed the complaint and we discussed it in the family and we needed the money. So we were, uh, we withdrew the complaint, but the people who were accused were the family bear. I mean, that's the CEO of the Julius Bear Group, uh, several managers of the Julius Bear Group. Uh, they all knew about the stalking. And were involved in it. So we received some compensation in respect of the stalking, but not all in, in respect of the of uh, what the, uh, about the Swiss bank secrecy. But the bank, I have to say, to make this crystal clear, is when the bank filed the complaint in 2006, uh, five or six months later. The CEO was fired of the Julius Baer Group, and then the bank offered me a half a million Swiss, also 500,000 US dollars. Uh, and the bank said, the representative of the bank said, Look, if you take the money, we make sure that uh, things are closed 
uh, with the prosecution. The bank filed the complaint. So the bank actually controlled the prosecution office. Uh, and I said, look, uh, I don't take any money from the bank. Uh, uh, I'm not accepting that offer. If I had accepted that offer in 2005, the entire case would have been closed. But I felt, but I'm still my uh, conviction or my, my the way of I think, the way I think, uh, I'm not going to take any bribery money, money to silence me. What they uh, started off, or what they tried to do is to make me mad in order to make, to, to go for violence or anything like that. So they expensed about 1.5 million US dollars to perform the stalking, because I know that from the, uh, the head of uh, uh, the general counsel of the Julius Baer Group, because they wanted to close the case. And then he said, we have already uh, uh, invested about 1.5 million for, they call it surveillance of my person and my family. But what really happened is that they were around so that we could notice, uh, for instance, uh, one of the examples where we lived in a dead end street, uh, nine o'clock in the evening, a car drove into this dead end street with high speed stopped in front of our house and left again. So the neighbors were aware of it, what's going on. Then my daughter wanted to go to the kindergarten. Uh, the, she was approached by one of these private detectives, offered chocolates out of a car. Uh, she was afraid. She talked about uh, these were black men. I'm not going to the kindergarten anymore. Uh, the private detectives actually went also about uh, or followed employees I worked for. I worked for the Noble uh, Investment uh, Group in uh, Zurich. So uh, they were waiting in front of our uh, office. And if an employee went out, the private detectives followed. Uh, so and there was also a uh, call. Uh, 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 how shall I say that it happened this way? My, my daughter, uh, my, my wife wanted to pick me up in the office and she had her grandmother with uh, the grandmother of my daughter. My daughter and two, two children were sitting in the car and we noticed that uh, the private detectives were around again. So I, I didn't go into the car. I, I just stayed and my wife drove home again on the highway and then the prosecution had uh, the private detectives followed uh my wife's car and actually on the highway it's, it, it, it turned out a kind of a chase and then i called my wife called me in the office and they said i called the police stay on the highway nothing will happen if you remain on the highway and i called the police and told them and then they then the police car and uh, actually they could uh, reach them and uh, then they gave the instruction to my wife to stop at uh, a certain place uh, and the private detective stopped about 50 or 60 meters behind and the police asked them then uh, what's going on and uh, at the end of the day uh, what really happened is that uh, the the, the police then told to my wife, uh, nothing is really happening, uh, everything is fine. Uh, the point is, at the beginning, I believe uh, they come from the school and uh, they have done their studies and they believe in justice and uh, doing things right. And once uh, once you get into that kind of business, there is so much money involved uh, that you many of them lose their low uh, ethical compass, I call it. And uh, you have to see if you... 
and to, in the year 2000, I mean, a uh, tax advisor in the Cayman Islands earned per hour thousand, maybe thousand two hundred US dollars. And if you start in the Caymans, I'm also talking about the year 2000, you have a yearly salary as a student, I mean, as a graduated student uh, of 150, 270,000 US dollars a year. Now, at the age of 40, you have so earned so much money being in uh, working as a uh, lawyer in the Caymans that you can't spend the money anymore in, in an entire lifetime. Up to a certain extent, I can understand, but <laughs> at the end of the day, they don't see the full picture what they do and what they, uh, with their jobs, uh, actually they make countries poorer than they, uh, and uh, hurt the civil society. I've, during my education, I mean, a uh, certified public accountant and have other uh, degrees, but uh, I was never trained in that respect uh, uh, by the law school. I was in a lucky position that I had a uh, uh, supervisor when I worked for KPMG and uh, had, uh, it was about a big company. Uh, and he was very strict, uh, um, a very important person in KPMG. And he said, uh, uh, once at the case on a, uh, on a conglomerate uh, that the owner wanted to change things in the balance sheet in a way which was away from any regulations. And he said, look, I'm not going to sign the, the contract. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, he had to resign at the age of 60 of KPMG, but he was a person who said, look, Mr. Elmer, if you audit the company, you have to make sure that things are clean and that company doesn't go bankrupt within the next four or five or six months. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be hanged. So uh, he was one of these persons, but he couldn't even uh, keep his position when he uh, started up saying, I do not accept uh, that kind of uh, business. Business is much, put it this way, these multinationals are so powerful, uh, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, I had in the Cayman Islands, I had an issue with uh, the balance sheet. Uh, it was about the international accounting standards. I talked to the, uh, to the partner of the Cayman Islands, Price Waterhouse. I said, look, uh, me as a you can't at that point, I can't sign this uh, balance sheet. And he said, yes, you're right. I, I wouldn't sign it, but I need to go back to Zurich uh, because Zurich is the headquarter or uh, is the headquarter of the Julius Baer Bank. And uh, basically it's a mandate with Julius Baer between Julius Baer and the Price Waterhouse of 2 million US dollars. Uh, and he said uh, to me, I'm not going to sign it, but first of all, I, I, give me time and I will talk to Zurich. Two days later, he came back and said, I'm going to sign the uh, the audit report. Now, what does that mean? I mean, he accepted it, the power of uh, the mandate or the, of Julius Baer, even with, uh, with Price Waterhouse, uh, top management. And these are bright people. They are not stupid people at all. They knew precisely that they did something which they shouldn't have done. In my case, uh, I couldn't find any, uh, uh, put it this way, a prosecutor or judge or uh, which I uh, could rely on. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I was very lucky that I had a Tibetan lawyer who defended myself in court and she was fighting like uh, a lion for its baby. Uh, but uh, yeah in the people who had dealt with my case, basically they had made sure that uh, the Swiss bank secrecy is protected. But what I can say uh, is there was a judge on the higher court of Zurich uh, who uh, wrote to me when I was in prison and uh, he explained me the case and he said, look, uh, what you are doing, you are 
more dangerous to the system as the Red, Red Army or a Red Brigade or uh, like a terrorist. You, you, you're challenging the system in a place because I was challenging Switzerland in Switzerland. I mean, I went for the Golden Calf in Switzerland. Uh, uh, you have to expect that thing. And if you do not get the political support in Switzerland, you will have no chance to win this, that case. Fortunately, uh, uh, there were two uh, uh, famous people who joined my battle. One of was of Mark Pete, who is the expert of uh, money laundering, uh, uh, because he wrote the law of money laundering uh, in 96 and revised it in 98, actually was also uh, he also wrote for the FIFA, the ethical uh, standards. Uh, Mark Pete was one of them, and the other one was a uh, former uh, uh, federal court of Switzerland. He was a judge there, but uh, was already retired, and he supported my case. So I had a lot of intellectual power on my end, which actually ended it, uh, and it uh, helped me that I won the case. I wouldn't have won the case uh, with my lawyer, definitely not. I really needed to have the brain power of people who are well known in civil society. And I had no political support, uh, honestly speaking, uh, because uh, it's a political issue, the Swiss bank secrecy, uh, which is a money making machine for, for Switzerland. Absolutely correct. I mean, I'm a political. I'm a political case. They they, they had to fight. There was no way that uh, otherwise uh, it would have uh, get another hole in 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 the system of Swiss bank secrecy. They had to show the international society that Swiss bank secrecy is still alive, which uh, actually they failed. I mean, uh, <laughs> luckily I have to say uh, they were that stupid. Uh, Julius Baer to file that complaint and actually pointing the, the, the issue to the international community about Swiss bank secrecy and they felt they're going to win and they lost. So they were too big headed. They were too arrogant. They felt we control the system from, from, uh, as a bank. We have that sort of influence, uh, but it didn't work out. So. If, if you look at the verdict, then the, three, the two people who were in favor of, um, of uh, finding me guilty actually were for the most conservative party of Switzerland. Uh, that's the party, uh, it's a Swiss pop party which wanted to have Swiss bank secrecy. Listen, listen, in the Swiss constitution, in the Swiss constitution, a Swiss bank secrecy. <laughs> which is ridiculous. This is a scandal. I mean, if you think about, we have the other case uh, about HSBC Switzerland. Uh, if the data which was confiscated with HSBC, and not confiscated, which HSBC, the, a whistleblower gave the data to, 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 to the French uh, authorities, part of it, uh, it was a decision at the federal court uh, to hand over that sort of data to the French just uh, to the French justice system uh, was also a three to two decision, uh, but in favor of handing over. And the key decision made the the president, who was part of the Swiss Public Party, the, mo the most conservative. What I told you. And actually, what happened is after that decision to hand over the, the information, which in the French case, it meant 99% of the, the client data was about tax evasion or even fraud. Uh, that judge was not re-elected anymore uh, uh, by the Swiss Conservative Party. He said that he had, they had wanted to him to, to step down, but fortunately, civil society decided or the parliament decided to elect him again. If you want to become a Swiss judge in, in Switzerland, you have to be a member of a member party. And if you're not a member of a member party, you never get 
uh, you never will become a, a, a federal judge. And on top of it, you have to pay 15 to 20 percent of your yearly income to the party as a contribution that uh, call it that you're going to be re-elected in four years time again. My experience was the media in Switzerland in Switzerland generally spoke very badly about me. I mean, I was a mentally sick person. Uh, I was out for revenge. I'm a criminal uh, uh, and so on at the beginning. Now, the last two, three years, things have definitely changed because there are so many scandals of if Freddy Swiss or, or whatever. Uh, now they started to speak positively about my case and uh, uh, they said uh, yeah, yeah, they even said we failed we failed in your case Ob obviously these are minor uh, newspapers not the big ones the big ones really feel that uh, they uh, they were right but uh, it's changing slowly but surely because uh, the put it this way the, the, the history of what's happening really in Switzerland about all those scandals, uh, they felt I was a kind of an early bird uh, stating that something is going terribly wrong in Switzerland and it actually went terribly wrong in, in, in my case. I mean, we are talking about uh, not only about tax fraud, we're talking about financing terrorism, Bin Laden constructions, a uh, Mexican drug police officer who was in the drug business and so on. So it uh, was very serious issues, but the media not even touched on that sort of thing. I mean, uh, I provided in 2006, uh, one of the major medias, uh, the, uh, the information, uh, and there was a, because the media actually should protect whistleblowers, but uh, there was a, a judge who then decided to hand over the data of the media because the media, the media should protect the informer, people who provide the information. Uh, he decided that uh, the information will be handed over to Julius Baer to protect its clients. But that happened in 2005. Now things starting to change. Absolutely, that's, that's the point. They really fail uh, uh, because the, the civil society, generally speaking, doesn't understand how things work. And, uh, they feel uh, they don't get the information. Uh, and uh, multinationals and ultra high net, in, uh, ultra high net uh, network individuals, they are so powerful that they actually can steer the media and uh, making sure that the information doesn't come out the way, not the information, let's say the truth doesn't uh, reach the man in the street. Uh, put this, uh, my experience now, uh, how shall I say that, uh, I mean, I was, I'm not saying I want to be a whistleblower. I mean, I personally, the way I am is I'm a person who wants to solve the problems. And I've tried to solve the problems within the organization and uh, challenge top management. Uh, and then I started to understand that they wanted to do the business as it is. It, is performed and they don't want wanted to have it changed. To then, uh, I requested a uh, evaluation of my person, and I it was a brilliant evaluation I've received, except one sentence: "I'm a critical thinking person." So, in other words, if you are critical thinking about things, they told me that uh, you shouldn't do that in an evaluation of your personal performance. So uh, my experience was in a sense that 
they actually uh, wanted to have me out of the bank. I mean, I had death threats in the bank. Uh, there was a lie detector test uh, performed, the criminal lie detectors, to get rid of me. Uh, the, the, the CEO of the bank in the Caymans called me, uh, it's better for you to, to stop or to cooperate with the bank. It's not, bad, not only better for you, it's better for the family. In the Cayman Islands, two days later after that uh, telephone call, I left with the entire family, the island, because uh, it's extremely dangerous to stay on such an island where, where uh, when you're not part of the game or don't play their game, I mean, many people already lost lives there. So that that was a kind of my experience. I was kind of forced into the going into the whistleblower to go to the public to explain the case to get protection. Uh, in other words, uh, I don't. I really didn't want to be a whistleblower. It's not a person. That's not my at my person as such. But what I can't understand and what I don't accept is if criminal business is performed and that me as a person I have to protect that criminal business due to business reasons. So, and the entire thing then exploded then. I, I started to uh, say, look, uh, I'm right, and uh, went to the media and so on. So the question here is, and that's something what I ask potential whistleblowers, because many there are whistleblowers to come to me and want to know what's go, what, what they should do. I ask them, do you have a family or do you want to work in your industry again? If one of these two questions is a yes, don't do it, because at these days you are destroying your entire professional life and on the normal circumstances also your family life because there's so much power out there going after you so but i had to do it because i need this kind of protection due to death threats we received not only back to my person also to my daughter whatever No, I wasn't really aware. I mean, I knew that Julius Baer uh, at the time uh, was, uh, put it this way, a very well-known organization. And uh, uh, I worked in the internal audit department and I learned about the business there. Uh, I, the Hans E. Baer, which was the president of Julius Baer, uh, I experienced him who uh, said to clients they have to to leave the organization. We don't want your money here. I mean, I felt uh, I'm in an organization where you turn down clients, which uh, when you're not very comfortable about it. But even the, he used to be the president of Julius Baer Group, so a kind of a flag figure, uh, internationally well known. Uh, and uh, he. Uh, when he learned about not only my case, our other cases, uh, uh, after he had retired, uh, he still was uh, president of the group, but he had retired. Uh, he said uh, publicly uh, and wrote a book about it, Swiss Bank, Se Swiss Bank secrecy makes us, us impotent and fat uh, as a big, but uh, and then he was actually uh, for the entire Faber family. They actually withdraw from him, and even his son uh, wrote badly in the public uh, about his father. What you say, well, if you are an internal one, I mean. Uh, I was an internal auditor for seven years and I should have picked up that sort of thing in my profession as an internal auditor and I I didn't realize things like that. I I, re, I, I came across what, what I told you about the president of the Julius Baer Group who kicked out clients and I felt I'm very comfortable here but once moved to the Cayman Islands because the Cayman Islands was... you used and uh, was uh, instrumental for the abusive, uh, abusive business. I couldn't understand that uh, 
we perform that sort of business down there. But even so, knowing that, I felt I can change things because they have sent me down to clean up the place. But at the end of the day, I had to, what, what really happened is I made it more profitable uh, to organization down there, uh, operational. It was an excellent uh, organization, became an excellent organization. We were even better than UBS. UBS copied our compliance manual and, and whatever. So uh, I felt that I could change things, but it wasn't possible at all. At the end of the day, I made it more profitable. And you need to know that we made about one third of the Julius Bear Group's profit in the Cayman Islands. So if you had 100 million profit, 30 or 35, 30 or 35 million came out of the Caymans. The case of what I say, 90%, 90% of all bankers are clean bankers. They are very honest people. But the thing is that the, the entire business process is broken up in so many small pieces that it's very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to see the big picture. What's, what's all about it? Uh, how, why does these things work this way? So for your students, it's important uh, on their put this way, even such an organization, which I have made, basically I have to say, uh, I shouldn't have done it much earlier, asking the why question. Why, why does this thing work this way? Why do we use the Cayman Islands? Why do we set up hedge funds in the Cayman Islands? Why uh, do we pay uh, that or sort of commission? Why do we have incentive fees? Why? This why question helps you to understand the, the system. So that's one of the key issues what you will have to take with you uh, of today's uh, interview, in my view. If you ask that why question, you have to be very careful in an organization because uh, Top management knows what they are doing. Top manager, you precisely want to know where does the where do we make profit? Where we do get the money? And why? You need to know that as top manager. Not, not only do you need to know, you want to know. It's still going on, but now I'm sitting in the driver's seat. Uh, I filed complaints uh, against the prosecutor uh, because they withheld my uh, employment contract. Basically, they could find me guilty or due to the fact that uh, uh, if I had had a employment contract with Swiss Bank, but my employment contract was with the Cayman Bank. So I was not on the Swiss Bank secrecy law, but that contract was kept hidden by prosecution and by the bank. And because prosecution searched my home, they had that contract and we couldn't have access to that sort of contract. So I filed a complaint against the prosecutor and even against the judge. Uh, there were other evidence which really showed that I am employed in the Caymans and not in Switzerland. Uh, but that was all ignored, so uh, it's now a federal court decision uh, pending. Actually, <laughs> one department already had a closed look at it, and uh, they gave it to the other department. Uh, they have to look into it again, and uh, let's see if there's an investigation going on against the prosecution and the judge. Uh, it would be exceptional, but... Uh, in my view, I think uh, I have to, uh, to do the job because I said from the beginning on, I'm going back to Switzerland, I'm taking the challenge and I fight for it uh, as long as I can to get justice.
I'm a pain in the neck in the justice system because they have already made about 120 court rulings in my case, 120. Uh, but I still go on. I'm able to write uh, the legal stuff in a way that they have to deal with it. They just can't turn it down and saying, this is a stupid guy or we can't follow what he says. Uh, I can express myself in German in a way that even uh, federal prosecutors uh, or federal judges know that they have to take it serious. Yeah. Uh, about the European Court of Human Rights. <laughs> Uh, I've already been 10 times to the European Court of Human Rights, but uh, every time the complaint was turned down at the first level, uh, the complaints were written or composed 50% 50, uh, 50 of them by my lawyer and 50% of them by me. Uh, it, was, it was basically about uh, the length of... Uh, the, the length of the treat because the, 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 in the case started in 2005 and lasted for 13 years, huh? 13 years, sir. and it's still going on. And I said, it's uh, after seven or eight years, you need to have a final decision. And in my case, according to the, to the European Court of Human Rights, but uh, they didn't take it uh, serious. So I learned about the way the European Court of Human Rights works. Uh, and what's happening, there is a so-called a Gerichtsreferent, uh, a Swiss Gerichtsreferent, that's a Swiss person in the European Court of Human Rights who looks at the case. And he makes a proposal to a judge, let's say a judge of Cyprus, a judge of Germany or a judge of England, to make the final decision. Uh, and that person basically decides about Swiss complaints. So in my case, I had about three decisions of, a, I think it was a Hungarian judge and the other one was one, two of them of the Letland. I, they even couldn't speak German because my complaint was filed in German and I have the right to file it in German. Uh, so the Swiss person who handled the case in the, European court actually decided to turn down the case uh, even so it was crystal clear in my view and the other people's view that this complaint had to go to 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 to, to the bigger court uh, and to find Switzerland guilty on on the time for instance how the entire case lasted uh, or the judge at the federal court of uh, at the higher court of Zurich actually closed the uh, closed, uh, court dealing, said now, uh, but he has some personal words to my person. He said, I'm, I'm not a whistleblower. I'm, I'm a criminal, criminal in my view. You have to see that it's in the courtroom, huh? what that happened. Even so, I had a acquittal. He, had, he was forced to give me the acquittal because uh, uh, I had, enough evidence and enough support he couldn't he was really sorry the wording pissed off that he uh that he had to give me the acquittal but uh then i that's the reason why i filed the complaint in the european court of human rights as well because he was he was not independent at all i mean but even that complaint was turned down so I don't trust the European Court of Human Rights, sorry to say, if you're a whistleblower. And then I took the case even to the, uh, how it's called, Greco, that's the group for corruption in Europe. Uh, they they looked at the case and they wrote back, uh, uh, they have no authority to investigate the case. Uh, my advice, I mean, I, and I think it's sad that I have to state it this way, is don't do it. 
or if you really are forced to do it or you think it needs to be done you have to do it anonymously but at the end of the day that's not the solution in our society we have to have the right to stand up and say this is wrong we have free speech and free press and uh, and that has to be protected and it shouldn't happen if you use free speech and press that you're going to encounter really like in my case personal financial and i know the personal the financial the social uh uh death kind of that shouldn't happen in our society so uh, but it's happening unfortunately that's why i have to say you have to do it anonymously if someone wants to do it this way uh, which is not good for our society honestly speaking Absolutely not. I, I wasn't. I, I felt I can solve the issue within the organization. The organization uh, has proper corporate governance. Uh, it's an ethical organization. And there's a point where you say, look, to a client, we don't want you. Leave. Or we file a complaint with the with authorities or whatever. Uh, but that's not happening at all. Um, I believe it's in many cases it's fear to lose the job to become a, an outlaw to uh, uh, and yeah the person has lost the, the how do you call it the ethical or moral compass uh, uh, but I think at the end of the day uh, it's up about the person who thinks uh, it's a, such a comfortable job. I I don't want to have I don't want to have it change. I I get my money. I have my family life, and you actually you have to see uh, these people are also kind of they feed uh, the the organization feeds these people with money. They're gonna have. Uh, uh, a big house, they have the swimming pool, you got the car, you, 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 and uh, you want to get, you want, you are not willing to give up that sort of thing. Uh, and I think that's the, that's, uh, that's the issue. It's, uh, I mean, I had an example when I was, I was a brilliant goalkeeper. Uh, with 18, I was one of the biggest talents and I had to play a game and uh, and that the other, the other team had to win the, the game because otherwise they would have, uh, they would have go to, uh, couldn't be in the same uh, division anymore. So they offered me, uh, because as a goalkeeper, you can control a game. Uh, they offered me thousand Swiss, thousand uh, dollars to pay to play poorly. Uh, I took the thousand dollars, gave it to the junior department, and said, "Look, this is the money for you and do what for juniors," and played my best game I could play because I was so pissed off about these guys. They were trying to bribe me. So, but that helped me in my person as such that I said, "Look." I'm standing up. I'm, I'm not accepting that sort of thing. And, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, actually, we, 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 we lost the game then. But anyhow, it was very good for me as a person because I still remember that thing uh, with, um, with doing the whistleblowing. I'm, I can't be, you can't buy my decision or my person as such. I want to be a free person and uh, I want to use my free speech and free uh, and uh, follow my values. To say, uh, I have very good friends. They said, uh, you, are, you are too big risk to my family because I work with banks or audit companies. Uh, we have to break up with the relations. We, we can't see us anymore. Uh, my brother, who worked for the police at the time, uh, he was uh, 
and his boss told him uh, uh, his personal career is uh, in danger because he's my brother. So I haven't had any contact for 10 years with my brother who still works with the police. So I lost a lot of friends. But on the other hand, and that's the important thing in my view, I gained a lot of great friends. I mean, uh, it was the chief investigator of the US Senate, uh, Jack Blum. Uh, it's a wonderful person. Uh, or many others, uh, Mark Pitt or, you know, on the one hand, you lose. On the other hand, you gain. Uh, and as well, and in my case, I have to say, I, I mean, I was three or four months in a mental home because I couldn't understand the system anymore. Uh, in my case, it's clearly, if you talk about heroes, the, the, the heroes in my story is my daughter and my wife. And they, those, they stick to me, and even during very difficult times. Personally, uh, you have to think about about what you want to be neutral. Uh, if it's a small issue, that's okay. That can happen. I mean, if if you do business, uh, error happens and you can contract. Uh, but if it's going to be a major issue, neutrality doesn't exist. I mean, at the end of the day, in my view, uh, if you accept abusive practice. I think it has, you are not really aware of it, but it has a big impact on you personally, which you wouldn't believe, but that's the case. And uh, in my case, it was when I was fed up with this issue. I was still under confidential law in the Cayman Islands and I had issues with my wife. My, I love my wife, but she said I became silenced. I uh, I didn't really connect to her anymore. I was uh, how tight and so my personal life suffered very much about it to my with my partner, and it has an impact. So neutrality, as you say, Costa, doesn't work if it's serious issues. You're going to personally suffer. You're going to personally. Yeah. And I think it comes back to the, the same issue we already discussed. Uh, ask, uh, ask the why question in many ways. You don't need to ask them directly. You can ask them indirectly that you think about why things work this or the other way. Uh, that's, that makes all the difference. And then you can decide if you want to be part of the game or let's say uh, the abusive game or if you don't want to be part of it and um, go for another job take care of yourself you are number one and if you get into your abusive business walk away it's the best thing to do because at the end of the day and that i have experienced is my family life uh, made my life a great life thank you that's that's so important thank you very much so we we really uh, have appreciated your time a little round of applause